Hello guys and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. So I recently made this little um, animation here. Believe it or not, we're not going to be working with geometry nodes. I found a way to do this that kind of makes it look like it's happening dynamically, but it's not really. And we're going to offset them in a very simple way. And I just think this is a very satisfying looking kind of animation. Now keep in mind, the original one, the one we'll be making today is just this one here which is the exact same thing. The only difference is with my original, I just added some more different types of materials and just slightly animated the actual thing moving. But it really is the same tutorial and I will be uploading um, my original to Patreon. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. And if you wanna check out my other channel that I have, a lot of you don't know about, you can look in the description below. I cover things like balloon twisting, origami and drawing. So you might actually enjoy it if you check it out. So in the description below. And let's get started. Okay, we're gonna keep this really simple. So what we're gonna do is uh, let's just delete the default objects in our scene. And we're gonna go ahead, Shift A, and under our mesh options, we're gonna add in a plane. With this plane active, we're gonna tab into edit mode. And with all of the topology active, we're gonna right click and go subdivide. So we now have a single vertex in the middle. With that vertex active, so it means you're selecting it, you're gonna go Control Shift B or Command Shift B on your keyboard. And now what you're gonna be able to do is create a bevel on your um, on a single vertex, like you can see here. So we're just gonna pull it out. Now, if you were to roll your middle mouse button, you'd add in more segments. We don't wanna do that. We just want one big uh, face like this, a single polygon. So uh, let's just make it probably about this big and I'm gonna go X and delete that face. Okay, so now we have this. I'm gonna press A to select everything and I'm gonna go E to extrude and just extrude it up. So it's go going up on a Z and um, let's give it probably about, I'd say about this much thickness. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our object out of properties. In fact, let's just quickly tab out, okay? So in object mode, we're gonna to go to our object out of properties and under the shape keys, we're gonna press plus over here. And we're gonna press it twice, okay? So we have our basis here, which is gonna be this one here with the small hole. And uh, before we go any further, let's just actually um, give this a subdivision surface modifier. Let's bump the viewport level up to two and the render we're gonna take up to four. That's important. I'm gonna tab in quickly and let's just go to our edge select option. And with the edge select, let's just go shift A and then left click on this edge and left click on this edge. So it's just done a little loop selection. And uh, what we're gonna do while we're holding shift and alt, let's just select these edges here. Just the ones that run around here like so. Okay, these ones, these ones, it's not, it's honestly, it's not that hard. And we only have to do this with one of these. So you can see there we have all of these edges going around selected. We're gonna go Shift E on our keyboard. So Shift E, and that's gonna make us um, add a, like a crease to these um, edges. So we're gonna increase it all the way up to one, like so. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna select just these four corners here, like so. And we're gonna go Shift E, but we're not gonna take it all the way. We're just gonna take it about this much. We don't want to give it a big bevel weight. So just something light, maybe even a bit smaller, something like that. And then we'll tab out. And eventually when this renders at the highest viewport level, um, it'll look nice and round. But for now, let's just leave it at two to optimize our scene. And we're going to right click and also go shade smooth. Okay, so now we have this. And let's go back to our object out of properties. Now we have our basis, which is this shape here. And if we click on key one, and we tab into edit mode, what we can do now is we can go over here to our face select option, shift alt and just left click here in between two faces and it's gonna loop select the faces. And then you're gonna go S, shift and Z. So S, shift Z. And then you're gonna just scale it out along the X and Y X axis only. So that kind of scales everything but it excludes the Z. So just like this, let's scale it up. I'd say probably about that big, okay? So it's about as big as we can get it before these sections here intersect. I'm gonna tab back out into object mode and now we have this key here and you can drag it and you can see we now have the slider, okay? So let's just leave it at zero for now. And while we're at it, before we go any further, let's give this some materials because it'll just make it simpler. So for now, let's just go new and let's just call this gold. I'm gonna call it gold. And I'm gonna just close the surface here. These are just placeholder materials, okay? Before we duplicate this. I'm gonna get a viewport display and let's give this a nice kind of golden color and let's make it slightly metallic. And then let's create another material. Let's go new. And let's just call this um, place holder one. You can make it whatever you want. I'm just gonna go into edit mode and I'm just gonna select these faces at the top 
and these faces at the bottom. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to assign that placeholder material like so. And then I'm going to tab back out. So eventually later you, we can go ahead and create a gold material and then you can select whatever material you want. I'm going to suggest where you can get some really high quality materials online, but we'll get to that eventually. For now, let's add in our balls. So we're going to go shift A. Let's add in our UV sphere. Actually, it's more of a marble. We're going to right click and go shade smooth and we're going to go and give it a subdivision surface modifier to make it nice and smooth. We're then going to go S to scale it down. And we actually want to grab our cube here. We're going to go to our object data properties and let's just increase this key one value all the way up to one. Then we grab our sphere and let's just scale it till it's just in there, but we don't want it um, hitting the sides. So something like that should be fine. Control A and just apply that scale, okay, for this ball. Now we have some things in place. Let's go Shift A. Let's also add in an empty. Let's add in a cube. And we're going to take these two objects and holding in shift, we're going to select the cube and go control P and we're going to go object keep transform. And this way, both of these are parented to this empty and it just makes it easier to grab them even once they've been animated. So what we're going to do now is we're going to select our little tile here. We're going to start with some animation with the keyframe. So we're going to go to our object data properties with key one selected. We're going to come here, give it a value of zero and on frame one, Okay, on frame one here in our timeline, we're going to come here and click on this little value and make it zero. We're then going to come up to frame five or frame four. Let's go to frame four. And let's click on this keyframe again on key one to add in a keyframe. So it's going to stay at zero for the first four frames. And then we're going to go up to frame 13. And on frame 13, we're going to drag this all the way up to one. And we're going to click on the keyframe again. So it's going to look like this if you hit the space bar. Okay, it's going to open up. And then we're going to come to frame 25. And on frame 25, we're going to take this and we're going to close it all the way back down to zero. And we're going to click on the keyframe again. Now, I know it doesn't make sense at the moment, but don't worry. They want to come over to frame 40. And on frame 40, we're going to take this and drag it all the way up to one and click on the keyframe again. So now it's opening up again. And let's come to frame 47 and in frame 47, let's close it back down to zero and click on the little um, keyframe here. So now we have this animation like that. Okay. Now it doesn't make any sense yet because we need to grab our sphere here. We need to go G, Z and move our sphere above our little cube here with the hole. Um, maybe let's go about this much, a little bit higher like so. Let's come over to frame one and on frame one, we're going to go I and we're going to insert a location keyframe for our sphere here, a little marble. And we're gonna come over to frame 50 and we're gonna go I and insert another location like so. Then we're gonna come right to the middle at frame 25 and let's go G, Z and move it down about the same amount, just eyeing it. And we're gonna go I and insert a location. So now what we're gonna see is this. If we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're going to see that, okay? As the sphere comes close, it opens just in time and closes again, and then it goes up like that. So it's kind of like evading intersection here because it, it, it just looks cool. Something about it that's really satisfying, okay? So what we're going to do now at this point, now that we have these three things created, in fact, let's just select our marble and just go give it a material, and let's just call that marble, okay? There we have it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to select these three items, okay? All of them, like so, we're gonna go Shift D to duplicate. And when you hold in control, we're in our top orthographic view. If you hold in control, you can snap it. Let's snap this empty right to the side. It's gonna snap right against it, like that. And now what we're gonna do is just gonna select these two objects, both of them, not the empty, just these two new duplications. Select all of the keyframes together and then go G and move it up to frame 10. So now you can see the first keyframe is on frame 10. Then we're gonna select all of these these three items here, including the empty. And in our top view, we're going to go Shift D to duplicate, holding in control, snap it to the side. And then once again, just select the two. Holding in Shift, just select these two, not the empty. Grab the keyframes and now move it up to 20. So we keep moving it up by intervals of 10. Okay, so now it's up to 20. And now select these three items. Go to your top view, Shift D to duplicate, holding in control, snap it over here. And now once again, select these two grab their keyframes and then go G and move them up to frame 30. Okay. And now 
Let's repeat. I'm going to select them all again, just these three. In our top view, Shift D to duplicate, hold and control, snap it. Select these two, grab the keyframes, move them up by 10. So that's going to be to frame 40. And then let's continue. Shift D to duplicate these three, hold and control to snap. Select our two objects, move it up to frame 50. And let's just do that three more times. So we're going to select these, Shift D to duplicate, holding and control snap it here. Let's select them both, move the keyframes up to frame 60. And then let's select them, Shift D, holding control and snap. Move these two up to frame 70. So I'm speeding up now because I'm just repeating it. So Shift D to duplicate all three of them, holding control. And one more time. Select these two, and now let's just move them up so they start at frame 80. So we've just gone up each time by 10 frames. And let's come here to our end frame value and make it 130 frames. And it's going to start at 1. So now if we save our file, so I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Let's just now go to frame 1 and hit the space bar. And let's just hide everything else by clicking over here to overlays. And let's just hit the space bar and let's play our animation. And now you can see it looks like this. And it kind of looks like it's something you would have done in geometry nodes and it's dynamic. And you could do something like this. There are ways you can do it. I have actually tried it out, but it's just a lot of setup. So this is just kind of a fun way without having to get into maths or geometry nodes or proximity nodes or anything like that. So um, that's looking cool. So now let's just um, turn off our overlays again. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna press A to select all of this or just, just drag over it and select it. Then you're gonna go G to move it and then holding in, actually, let, let, let's leave it. Let's just grab the middle empty here. Get an empty here in the very middle, okay? I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate that empty. And then we're gonna go S, Z, we're gonna scale up into Z and it just makes it easier to grab. And then we're gonna grab all of these other empties. So holding in Shift, let's just select all of these other empties here. Make sure not to select the, the mesh. So just these empties here like so. So we've got them all selected and holding in shift, select the big empty and then go control P, object, keep transform. And now we have this big empty here. And in our top view, we're just gonna go G and Z and move it and just snap it to the middle where our cursor is. So now our object is right in the middle here. And in our right orthographic view, we're gonna go R and just rotate it slightly like this. And you can do whatever you want, okay? For my original, I kind of animated this with some keyframes. Um, but you can do whatever you want. And in the front view, I'm just gonna go R, Z and rotate it slightly like so. Just giving it something that looks a bit more dynamic. And now we're gonna go Shift A in our front view. Let's add in a camera, move the camera back. Something like this, get a nice pose. There we go. And then we're gonna go to our render settings. Let's go to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. Otherwise, it's just gonna take a bit longer. And with the max samples, let's make it 80. I think should be fine. And once again, make sure to save. And then in our front view, we're just gonna add in, let's go with uh, area light. I'm gonna move the area light to the side. And at the moment, this scene is really massive. So let's just select this empty and just scale it down. I get a main empty. And now that's a bit better. Now I'm gonna select my light, just rotate it here. Let's give it a strength of 250 and increase the size to two meters. And then we're gonna shift D to duplicate. Let's rotate this guy in from the side. And then let's duplicate and have one coming in here. So in our camera view, we might have to move our camera in just a bit. Let's go Z, let's go render it, and let's see what this looks like. Okay, it's looking pretty good. We're gonna go Control B and just drag over our camera just to limit the rendering to the camera. Cool little trick. And let's now go to our um, world properties. Let's go to color and for now, let's just give it a sky texture. You could use a HDRI, which I'd recommend. And then you can mess around with the sun rotation here till you feel like you've got some nice lighting. I'm gonna just use that to get a bit of rim lighting here on the side. And then we're gonna go shift A, just quickly add in a plane, scale it up nice and big. And I'm gonna move my plane down and I'm gonna tab into edit mode and just select this edge here and extrude it up. You can do whatever you wish. Tab back out, right click, go shade smooth, and let's give this a material, and let's just make it dark, okay? Now if we go into our camera view here, 
we can see we have a nice background. Now I would actually come here and make it less reflective by bringing up the roughness and it also bring down the specular a lot as well. Something like that looks cool. And now we can actually go into our shading workspace and let's grab one of these tiles and let's go to the gold. Let's make the base color here a nice gold material and let's give it a metallic value. Let's bring down the roughness to about 0.1 and now if we go into our rendered view, we can see here we have this kind of gold looking material. Mess around with it, all you want, add some texture, some scratches, whatever you want. Then we're going to select the marble here. And the marble is really fun. So with the marble, we're going to give it a base color that's kind of slightly bluish. We're going to come bring the roughness all the way down. We're going to bring the transmission all the way up to 1. And then over here, we're going to go shift A, search and get a mix shader. And in the bottom, we're going to drag and we're going to type in emission and get an emission. So we have the principal at the top and emission down the bottom. And let's make the emission orange and give it a strength of 7. And then we're going to go shift A search and get a Fresnel node. I'm going to plug that into the factor. And then we're going to go shift A search and get a color ramp node and place it over here. And now let's just visualize the color ramp here for a second by having it plugged into the surface. And let's drag these values till we tighten these things up. So we're gonna bring this white value closer, bring this black value up, and then let's plug the shader in. And now this is gonna be the distribution. So wherever it's white on the rim, we're gonna get this nice emission here for the orange. And wherever it's black or more black, it's gonna be more of this kind of marbly blue material. And we can mess around with that a little bit. I just think this looks really good. Um, it's just a nice looking material. I might just bring the strength down on this a bit, make it even more saturated, but you guys see how cool this looks. It's a really cool look. And at this point, what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna go over to the internet. I'm gonna type in Polyhaven. So Polyhaven is a free site of resources. And let's just go to their textures section. And over here, you're gonna see there are a whole bunch of textures, so shaders. And the cool thing is, it doesn't matter what one you click on and choose, you can come over here to the download and automatically you can choose, it'll have Blender, you can choose the resolution and you're just gonna download it. It's gonna download a blend file. And then all you have to do is extract that blend file, whatever it is, and I've covered this before, and then you can just select your tile, you can go over to your placeholder material and you can go file, you can go append and then find wherever you might have saved it on your computer. So I have a bunch of them that I've downloaded over the years. You can just simply click on one. So I'm gonna go with just an example. Click on a blend file and then go append under the materials. Click on whatever material it is and then simply select your tile, go to the placeholder and then come to the drop down and then swap it out. And that's a cool little trick. It's gonna save you a lot of time. And just keep in mind um, with some of these things if they're not UV unwrapped, in this case, you can see that our tile was UV unwrapped, so it's showing, but in some cases, you might just have to come here to your setup and change it to more procedural mapping. But I'm not gonna get into that at the moment. I think this is enough that we've covered. So for now, I'm just gonna do that to all of these. Just swap out that placeholder material. Okay, I've swapped them all out. And with my original, I added more material. So some of these I gave a different material, which is really easy to do. Um, but I'm not gonna be covering that right now. I'm just kind of showing you the main idea here. So if you now wanna render this out, you can go over to your output settings. So you go to your output, click on the output folder, select somewhere like your desktop, and then you can change the file format to FFmpeg video. And under the encoding, you can go to MP4 and then give it a save, and you can go render and render animation, okay? So I'm gonna quickly show you guys my original. Here's my original. Um, all I've done here, here is just mess around a bit more of my lighting, added different materials here, and I've um, also animated slightly this empty here with some basic keyframes, just with some rotation. Um, but really, it is the same thing. I've also just added a little bit of motion blur. I went to my renders, I added motion blur, and with my camera, I just added some depth of field as well and I selected that empty as my focus object and then brought my f-stop down till I liked the nice soft focus in the background. Um, but it's the exact same thing and I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. 
I will be uploading my original hero to Patreon, and I hope you guys enjoyed.